Hi friends, happy Friday and happy weekend. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to leave a message that's separate from my book reading, which I will be doing later on today, but I wanted to leave a personal message because a lot of what's been going on around us in the world has been weighing heavily on my mind and on my heart. And I know it has been weighing on your minds and your hearts too. So I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on that and to talk to you about how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking and what I've decided about how I'm going to approach my life going forward. And so I want to give you a little bit of background. Like the last few days, especially, um, and especially yesterday, uh, were hard. We're really hard. I spent the morning in tears with my sweetheart, just feeling distraught and just feeling a lack of hope and a lack of belief in humanity in general, um, our government in particular, um, our society, our way of life, just going forward. I was feeling a sense of fear and trepidation and anger and pessimism about what the future holds for us, not just here in my own state of Oregon, where our governor has inflicted all kinds of um, mandates and restrictions on our personal freedoms, but also across our country, I think a lot of us are feeling trapped. Trapped by the inability to go somewhere with better options than we have where we are. Um, not only is this a local problem, this, it's not the pandemic, it's, it's governmental in nature and it's pervasive and it's not what's going on in our world, in our environment isn't logical. There's no logic or science to it. And so for people like me who really need things to make sense uh, in order to function effectively, it's disconcerting and uh, it feels like our world's been turned upside down and there are so many people who seem to subscribe to the, the illogic of things and the lack of science and who don't really care about taking the time to investigate what we're being told by the media, um, who don't seem to care about truth and fact, but they're it appears that many people are willing to take things at face value without doing their own research um, to discover whether or not uh, claims are substantiated or if they're based on fact or not. And for me, for people like me, that's really, really frustrating. And so I've been having a, a really difficult time with all of that for the, especially the last year, ever since the whole COVID-19 thing came into play. But even more than that, the politics and the, the way that government has used this period of time, I don't even want to say pandemic because that's even debatable but has used this event to um, restrict our freedoms. And so that's been feeling really like oppressive to me. And I, like many of you, have been feeling angry and frustrated and helpless and like a victim. Like I don't, I feel like I'm just one person. What can I really do? to change things? What can I really do to make a difference? 
when it seems like the people in power with the money and the influence are the ones who make the decisions and uh, the little people, um, the people who are deemed non-essential or whatever are just having to struggle with trying to make ends meet and having to make their life work somehow. <sighs> so I've really been letting that get to me. I have, and that's not my nature. It's re I'm really not normally affected by these kind of outside influences to to the same degree that maybe some other people are because I really try, it's important to me to stay grounded and centered and to just be happy and not allow drama to really impact my life, but I have. And so it's been wreaking havoc, not only my world, my immediate world and my personal relationships, but also in my psyche, in my mindset. And so I was thinking about that last night while I was laying in bed about the, the reason that I was really thinking about it last night is because I noticed that yesterday morning when I got up, my husband is a real um, early bird. He gets up early and I'm a night owl. So he's usually up for several hours before I get up. And typically he's just happy-go-lucky you know he tries to, like he doesn't do social media he tries to stay um as unaffected as possible by world events so that he can you know be happy and um I noticed yesterday that he was having that same energy until I got up and started talking to him about all the events that I had seen in the news the day before the night before uh, and I just watched over the hours, as the hours passed yesterday, how my energy was infectious and his energy rose to meet mine in the same space so that the more frustration and anxiety and anger I shared with him, the more he caught that energy and we built on it with one another and and by the evening we were both just feeling so exhausted and so distraught and so sad and and fearful and helpless and so that's what I was reflecting on last night in bed he was laying next to me asleep and I was thinking about how my energy really makes a big difference in his daily experience and my own too, obviously. And, and I just decided that despite what's going on in the world, like I can't really, I'm just one person. I can't really do that much to change the big picture, but what I can do is change my own world experience. And so you know, I li I'm 58, almost 59 years old. And so I lived for a long time before there was ever a thing as such as the internet, before the internet was ever invented. You know, and we were talking yesterday about how, you know, it used to be back in the day that if you were out for the evening and somebody called you and you weren't home, they just didn't get an answer. There was no voice message. There was no answering machine. There was just no answer. And you were gone and you didn't even know that there had been a phone call made to your house while you were away. And the person calling just knew that apparently nobody was home and they couldn't leave a message. And so if it was truly important, they'd call back later. But there was such a a freedom in that, that like when we're out and about spending time with each other and we're not at home, people can't reach us. We're not on call 24 seven. We don't have this constant demand for our time and our 
our mental space and our energy and all the fears that are associated with that, the, you know, worry that comes with, did I miss a phone call? Did I miss an interaction with someone? It was just so much more relaxing and less stress. You know, you didn't have to be plugged in to, you know, a bazillion different channels 24 seven so that you're being bombarded constantly with world news and all the things <laughs> that we worry about that we allow to invade our brain space and suck away our peace and our joy. And so while I'm really grateful for the internet and all the ac easy access to, techno to, to technology and information and education and all the good things that brings, I'm really wanting to reel things in and not give my personal power, <laughs> my personal joy away to all of those outside influences. I used to say, I, I used to have a saying about world events going on that don't directly impact me in my little circle, in my little community. And that is, it's another beautiful day in my town, Oregon. And what I mean by that is that if it weren't for the internet, I wouldn't know about what's going on in China or Zimbabwe or, you know, Sydney, Australia, or London, England, or I wouldn't know about that stuff. All I would know about is what's impacting my hometown, my world view. And there is a sense of peace that comes with that, that knowing that, you know what, you can't change all those things. You can't help all those people. There's a... Um, there, Jeff and I went to a, a all day concert like years ago, an outdoor event. And there was this band. I never heard of the band before. I haven't listened to them since. I don't know their music, but the name of the band was Stabbing Westward. And they had, there was one song that this lyric stood out for both of us. Um, and it's, I don't even know the rest of the lyric, but the lyric goes something like this. Not exactly. I'm paraphrasing something like this. Um, I cannot save you. I can't even save myself. And so that, has, that was so profound. That has had such an impact on both of our brain spaces and, and our outlook and how we approach life. And that is like, take care of you first. Kind of like that whole biblical um, saying that like, don't freaking try to pull the splinter out of your neighbor's eye if you've got a log in your own you know you need to take care of your own problems first you know don't try to worry about solving the world's problems until you've resolved the problems in your own home in your own relationships in your own mind in your own community so i'm just deciding to take a deep breath today and be grateful and have joy. I want to have joy and return to who I am in my nature. And I, I don't want to immerse myself in social media anymore because it's infectious. The anger, the frustration. I mean, it's kind of a dichotomy because on the one hand, I don't want overlords, governmental overlords, to be allowed to run shot, roughshod over our lives and our freedoms and our liberties and take those away from us because we're not looking. But on the other hand, I don't want to voluntarily forsake and give up my own joy and my own daily peace and happiness, which is something that is a lot more abundant when you check out from society. It's really true. It is like just being alone with yourself and with nature. There's such a sense of peace that we just don't have when we engage with 
society so much. So anyway, I just wanted to leave this message because I'm, I'm feeling like a burden on my soul, kind of. I hope that maybe my message will resonate with some of you and that you might feel like you too can step away from social media and start focusing more on what's going on in your own home, in your own town, in your own personal, real-life, face-to-face relationships, and stop worrying so much about what's going on in the world at large. And in that way, our energy will resonate and will have a ripple effect. If we're happier... And we start having better relationships in our families and in our neighborhoods and in our communities that will resonate out. And I think that's the best we can hope for, really. So anyway, I'm not saying this because I feel like I have a bunch of wisdom or anything. I'm just saying I'm exhausted from feeling oppressed by the fear and the constant threat of oppression And I feel like we just need to like step away from all that and live our lives and reclaim our lives, reclaim our joy and our happiness and our sense of peace and not allow outside forces to dictate to us um, how to live our daily lives. Anyhow, that's all. I just wanted to share that with you because that's how I'm feeling today after spending yesterday especially, but days and months, you know, before that, just feeling fearful and oppressed. I'm just really choosing to tap into my my inner peace and my inner joy and to know that until and unless something comes knocking on my door to like physically threaten that, uh, the best I can do is the best I can do (laughs) is to be happy. So anyway, I don't know if that'll help you or not. I hope maybe it will. Maybe it seems naive to some of you, but I really do feel like there's just not much that we can do as individuals um, beyond making a change for good in our own minds, in our own bodies, in our own homes, and then branch out from there. So anyway, I hope that you can be happy and find joy. And that's all I have to say. If that uh, message resonates with you, I'd love to hear back from you. Take good care and I will be reading more chapters from my book to you again later this evening. Uh, I wish you peace and happiness.